Happy holidays, folks. We made this episode just for you. We got Ty, we got Torian, we got Tooker, and all the great content from these guys and other people just so you can get the best of the best for this holiday season. Five, four, three. Very few people are motivated by their passions up front. When that fight comes, and we've all got a fight coming, every single one of us, you step into that ring with only what you have forged into your character leading up to that day. They want to be part of the outcome, but they don't necessarily want to be part of the process because it's scary. And if they hear you say collision and they're afraid of conflict, I got to go to the restroom, yeah, yeah. I'm out of here. I'm out of here, yes, <laughs> they've done that. We basically transform this entire space into a studio every week. And what I want you to see is the opportunity to be exposed to all these different entrepreneurs, all these different people that can share their wisdom and insights, because one idea can change your life today. Good is the enemy of great. Yeah, we got some good people, but I want to be surrounded by great people. So I'm really focused on who am I pouring, who am I putting my, into my life intentionally? You know, Jim Rohn said you're the average of the five people you spend the most money on. Well, I think you can intentionally create that five. Like you said, those those power words, the negative and the positive, actually they program us. Oh my goodness! Um, one of my mentors says this all the time: is that we are words housed in flesh. Don't settle for anything. Don't settle for just being average. You are great. Find out what that greatness is. Serve it to the world. We want to help you find, follow, and finish your course of destiny in everything that you're doing in your life right now. So in this clip, you're about to hear from Ty, how he interviews each person that comes in. Ty's super successful, he's owned tons of gyms, and now he's in the stage of life where he actually interviews deeply, looks at the people and says, what makes them successful? What makes the great great? What makes the best the best? And how do you apply those principles to your life? And I went on this quest for the longest time to figure out why is this? You know, what, it didn't make sense. Now, fortunately, you know, running my, I had a chain of health clubs by this time, and I'd hang out at the front desk, and people would come in, and if you were successful at anything, if it was in business, if you'd been married for 25 years and were happy, if you were a bodybuilder that was winning black belt martial yeah. arts, if you were successful at something, I was interviewing you. Yeah. They usually didn't know they were being interviewed, but I was. I was looking for what sets these people apart. And there's a couple things that I found that make key differences on why, you know, why is it that people, you know, you go to the big, you know, uh, motivational seminar with Tony or something, right? And it, most of the people leave really motivated. Not very many of them really keep it going, mm -hmm. you know? And one of the things is there's a direct relationship to way, the way people line up their priorities with their actions. Mm -hmm. Very successful people have a different way they think about doing this. And I'll give you a really simple example. It's like if I ask somebody, what's your number one priority? They go, oh, my health. Health is number one priority. Great. Mm -hmm. What'd you have for breakfast today? Oh, I had to skip breakfast because I had to take my friend to the airport, you know? So I just, you know, grabbed a yeah, coffee and a scone at, you know, the local coffee shop or something like that. It's like, okay, I respect the fact that you were there for your friend. Your number one health is not your priority. Now, I'm not saying don't take your friend to the airport, but you knew you had to take them. Mm -hmm. So you could have maybe blended that drink the night before, or you know, it's, you can, by the way, you can blend a drink and be out the door in five minutes with cleanup. Easy. Yeah, I mean, Easy. it's like I, I drink my drink on my way to where I'm going all the time. So when people tell me they don't have time to be healthy, it's not true. Mm -hmm. It does take some education and some planning. Correct. So, but lining those, those, making sure that those priorities and those actions line up. You know, people talk about, you know, they want to make a lot of money, but then you look at the decisions they're making throughout the day and they're buying lots of trinkets and stuff and wasting money and all these other things that they don't need to do. It's not in alignment with their other goal. They feel like they're motivated, they're trying to do the things and go into their seminars, but then their actions aren't really lining up quite right. So what are the positive examples of their actions lining up? And what does that look like? And what is it that makes them line up? So someone goes to a mm -hmm. seminar, they learn something from this stuff. Why do some people listen to those tapes and it collides or makes transformation? Because we were literally, Ty, you missed it, but we were just talking about this with mm -hmm. Bob of like you, mm -hmm. you're the exact example where we were just talking about the episode before with Bob Donnell, where Bob brings up like 
spending your last dollars mm -hmm. to invest in yourself where that collision, that investment in you knocks you off this course but puts you on a right course and channels and changes everything. Because Ty did own a ton of gyms up in uh, Portland, Oregon area. He's built all kinds of things, done a bunch of things. And and I didn't know that whole, I didn't even know that part of the story, Ty. Mm -hmm. Like that you bought the tape, like this wasn't yeah. even, this wasn't pre-planned at all. No. But it was crazy, no, it just, just lines talking. up with everything we've been talking right. about today. And, and, and doing these podcasts because you have to invest in yourself. So you invested in yourself and had drastic transformation. Why isn't it working in other people? And, and what is working? Why, why does it stick with some people? Why does it work with some people? And why is not other people? Like, what you is know, that? There, there, like? There's why? a couple things I want to talk about. And one of, one of them, there, there's a health link to it that I want to come back to. Okay. The most of the times that I see people who are able to really drive themselves, they have a very strong reason to do it. You know, it's like, it, you know, I mean, it, it's, you know, you, you have a much deeper reason to train than just wanting to throw a, a you know, a kick or a punch. It, you know, I mean, I mean, literally, I mean, you're a guy that, that you know, cause I, I know your backstory very well. You, you know, most people that have been through what you've been through wouldn't be walking. You know, you're not only walking, but you're in the ring, you're going, you know, toe to toe. Most people, they need something, it's usually that thing that hits them in their life that is so powerful, it brings them to their knees and it forces them to take action. They have a huge reason to move forward. You know, people are motivated either through, uh, um, you know, our, what, what's, what's the saying? Uh, you know, our pain pushes us till our passion pulls us. Very few That's people good. are motivated by their passions up front. Mm -hmm. This is something True. we cultivate. It's that 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 deep seated survival push True. that drives people, and we go through life until we have that instance that really pushes us. And you know, I hear people say all the time, "It's like, well, you know, if that you know thing ever happens, you know, I'd rise to the occasion." And you know, I. I hate to tell tell really you this, not. it's not true. You're not you rising every day. You, you step crash. when that fight comes, and we've all got a fight coming, every single one of us. You step into that ring with only what you have forged into your character leading up to that day. Correct. And it's the people that, that take the time to forge their character over that time that are able to For stick years with years and things. decades can handle. And it's making those, you know, the, those daily decisions building those re rituals and, and allowing yourself to be driven for a greater purpose, mm -hmm. you know? So you just got done watching how Ty framed character, how f Ty framed purpose, and how what made the great great and how they executed on this. Is, and, and I love how Ty says this. He goes, we all have a fight coming. And when your purpose and character is built, you will function at the level you have been prepared for, for that fight. Now we're gonna go into Torian, and we're gonna to see how Torian found his purpose, how he found his calling, and how you can find your purpose, and you can find your calling too. I remember um, this one particular time um, that my grandmother, she began to really speak into the future me. And I can only, I don't remember what time it was, I think it had to be between um, age six and seven, six and seven, I remember specifically her just speaking into my life and say, you're gonna do great things one day. You're gonna do amazing things. I don't want you to be like everybody else. You, you chart your own course. You follow your own drum, drum beat. You know God has called you to do some great things. Just do it. And I remember just hearing those things, you know, over and over and over again. So um, when it was time to try out for the choir, you know, I tried out for the choir and, you know, I didn't know if I was going to make it. My grandmother was like, you're going to make it. And I made the choir. Um, but then in about fourth grade, she passed away. And that was probably one of the defining moments in my life because my grandmother was everything to me. Yeah. I, she spoke life into me. She spoke that I was gonna be a leader. She spoke that I was gonna do great things. And I believed her, because you believe your grandmother, right? Power <laughs> Otherwise, of words. Otherwise, you know, the power of words. She and those just- words in someone's life, yeah. Yeah, and she, she, those words impacted my life. And then she exposed me to, you know, the opportunity to step out and be great. Don't settle for anything. Don't settle for just mm -hmm. being average. You are great. Find out what that greatness is. Serve it to the world, you know? And so she passed away when I was about in, in fourth grade. And 
I remember just, I was talking to um, one of my, one of the guys that I mentored just about this the other day, that as I was riding down the road um, in the back seat, you know, after she passed away, it was about months upon months, that's when I really felt like God began to speak to me about purpose and about connectivity and about finding the source of your strength. I'm talking about this is fourth grade. I mean, I'm not, you know, super deep and theological or anything like that. It was just, I'm driving in the, I'm riding in the back seat and I just began to notice the trees and how the trees were green as long as it was connected to the source of the soil. Mm -hmm. As soon as you disconnect that thing from the source of the soil, it's gonna die, it's gonna lose its vibrancy. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, I felt like as long as I connect to this God that my grandmother you know, really exposed me to, I'm gonna see a vibrancy about my life. And um, so those are some things that, so that was one thing and uh, words as well. I mean, like you said, those those power of words, the negative and the positive, actually. They program us. Oh my goodness. Um, one of my mentors says this all the time: is that we are words housed in flesh. Let that sink in. We are words housed in flesh. That the words that were spoken into our lives and over our lives, you have the opportunity to either believe them or not believe them. And if you believe them and you absorb them and you acted upon them, that becomes your true reality. Right. And so if a person grows up here, you're stupid, you're dumb, you'll never be mounted to anything. You're going to be just like your no good daddy and all of these different things. And you begin to believe those things. What begins to happen is that you look in the mirror and you see your dad. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you have a conglomerate of those things, as well as the positive words that you're going to do great things, you're going to do powerful things. You're going to be in front of people. You're going to be on TV one day. People would say that to me, like you're going to be on TV one day. I, I'm, I know I can see you on billboards. And I chose not to believe the hey, your dad's not there, you're a bastard Correct. child, and all this. I chose to believe you're gonna do amazing things. You have a purpose, you're here for a purpose. So share that with these right. people out here. Like, what yeah. would you wanna to speak to them right now, Dwayne? Yeah. Like, I would say share with them right now. Like, what are, what are you seeing in them? Like, yeah. if you could, I, like, if you're watching this right now, like, what negative crap has been given into you that yeah. you're actually believing, and what is the old BS story that you want to change today? Yeah. People on Instagram today, if there's anybody out there watching right this second, like, what are the BS stories that you've been fed over your life, the shit that people have told you, the negative people have told you, the crap they've told you, you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not, you're not smart enough, you're not gonna go far in life because you didn't do this. Whatever that crap people have fed you in the past, what are you gonna to choose today to start changing? And which group of words are you gonna start listening to, so? That's right, so you believe a better story. I think you believe a better story. You have to believe a better story. You gotta start looking at your life and say, you know what, I've been through some stuff. I've encountered some stuff. Some stuff has been done to me, but I'm still here. Yeah. It, it didn't destroy me, which lets me know that I'm stronger than the opposition that was faced in front of me, that there's something greater on the inside of me that's overcoming every obstacle and every trial. Yeah, we have bad days. Yeah, we have horrible days. Yeah, we have bad relationships and all those different things. But the reality is that you're watching this, you're breathing, you're, 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 you have the ability to move, whatever it is, you overcame it. And now you can believe that story that I'm an overcomer. So why is it so important to hear this over and over again? Why is it so important that we listen to this stuff every day? And like, why is it so important that we actually spend time listening to Torian talk or other people mm. doing the same thing and encouraging each other constantly every day yeah. over and over again? Why is this so important? Because mm. every day we have to awaken and remember mm -hmm. who we are, where we're going with our life, what is our purpose? Awaken and remember every day, okay, Okay, today I'm gonna to do it today again. I'm gonna knock it out again. I'm gonna That's move right. another step forward today. I'm gonna to push this forward. I'm not gonna to listen to the old crap. I'm gonna to go to the new direction I know I'm clearly called or built to do in my life. And yep. this is why we get these encouraging moments. We listen mm. to Torian's story. We listen to Greg's story. We listen to Ty's story. We listen to Bob's story. We get these stories and we see, we hear your story out there because mm -hmm. you're gonna share your story with somebody yeah. that's gonna impact their lives that we won't be able to impact them, but you can with your story because you awaken every day and say, ah, I'm called to do this. I have a purpose in my life. I'm gonna impact my employees. I'm gonna impact the people I lead. I'm gonna that's impact right. my friends. I'm gonna impact yeah. my kids. I'm gonna impact my wife and impact my husband whatever you're listening to right now you're gonna wake up and arise again and say I will live a life of impact no matter what that's so. right
That's right. Come on, man, and preach. You were preaching over here, right? Yes. I love it. I see it in you, right? No, but the, the, I'm so glad that, that you come with that level of intensity because that's what it takes to overcome those negative thoughts. Every day. You know, the reality is that you are bombarded every single solitary so day negative. with negative thoughts, with negative image, with negative emotions, and all of these different things. And the only way for you to overcome a negative thought is with a positive word. So let that sink in. See, think about this. I want you to go with me. The way that we are created is that whenever we hear a word, we see a picture. Mm -hmm. When the negative thought, you can't, mm -hmm. you're idiot, you're this, you're that, and all those different things, you open up your mouth and say, I am a leader of leaders. I'm a motivator of motivators. I'm an influence of influencers. Everything I put my hands to do prospers. Every place that I go, I have favor. People are using their power, their ability, and their influence on my behalf. When you start saying stuff like that. change your life by just saying the words, By the right? words, the words that you speak. reprogramming. So you Absolutely. take the action and start Absolutely. And living in that format. Like, Absolutely. I am a leader of leaders. That's right. I am a person that builds something. I'm a person right. that impacts people. I, That's right. I wake up and take care of my body. That's right. I care about my body. I care about the results of my life. Absolutely. Like, and Absolutely. you start programming yourself, right? Absolutely. And this is the way that you do it. Anything you do repetitiously will become easy. Mm -hmm. Anything that becomes easy will become a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Anything that's a pleasure you will do often. And anything you do often will become a new habit. Yes. So we just got done watching Torian. Talk about the principles that were poured into him from his grandmother that forged and made him. And the habits that he's living out daily in his life to create the character of the man that's truly impactful to people. Now we're, now we're moving in from Torian and the Bob. And we're seeing this connection of people that get around other people so that those principles are poured into them so they can take these principles and understand how do I live this life and then pour these principles into other people as this show is trying to pour principles and understanding of life into you from things we're learning, from things we're experiencing, from I'm pulling all these different people in to share with you what they've learned, how they've learned it, and how they're using it to impact their lives and the lives of those around them. My focus is really on how do I continue to pour or be poured into uh -huh. so that I have something to pour out. And so I'm constantly learning. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I learn from you. I learn from Joe. I learn from people that I surround myself with because I'm constantly looking to be next, the next best version of myself. And so my thing is to really surround yourself with great people. And, um, you know, Jim Collins wrote a book from good to great and in it, he says, good is the enemy of great. And yeah. so when I say, you know, yeah, we got some good people, but I want to be surrounded by great people. So I'm really focused on who am I pouring, who am I putting my, into my life intentionally? Mm -hmm. You know, Jim Rohn said, you're the average of the five people you spend the most money on. Well, I think you in, can intentionally create that five. Most just haven't intentionally done it. Most have said, okay, the five people I hang around, my family, the people I work with, the people I went to school with, people I went to college with, those are my five. Mm -hmm. Well, great, but maybe you need a new five. And so I say, what do we create an intentional peer group? That's why we created Next Level by Association. And so I've been really intentional about who am I putting into my life and then um, sharpening that saw by letting them speak into my life. And you know, you mentioned it, but I think one of the things that I've noticed about you is that coachability and, and, and that that vulnerability and I have to be the same way I mean I'm constantly saying you know who are the people in my life that I give permission to speak to me mm -hmm. without me having to tell them it's okay to give me feedback like I don't give unsolicited advice I, I, I hate unsolicited advice mm -hmm. given to me and I hate to give it to somebody else yeah. so I'm really big on saying do I have permission to share with you something unless they're a coaching client C coaching clients they've already given me permission so I do it right yeah. but I'm really big on surrounding myself with people that have permission to speak to me in whatever language and in whatever method they need to do so, to reach out of me. curiosity, like who's spoken to you in the last three to six months of something that's impacted you, like where you're like, holy crap, they nailed me on this, or mm. it's really created a shift in my life. Like who's, who's really dropped some words or spoken to you or challenged you? And wow. what was that specifically out of curiosity? Oh boy. Um, I mean, I, I can think of a couple of weeks ago, um, Wesley Gu and I, who's, who's a yeah, good Wesley's friend. amazing guy. Wes, um, you know, Wes and I were having a conversation and, and I said something and he says, do you mean that? And I went, well, yeah. And he goes, really? And I said, yeah, but why are you questioning it? And he goes, because if you mean that, this wouldn't have been said earlier. Mm -hmm. 
And I went, hmm. And what he had done was he had caught my language. My language was saying one thing, and it was saying the same thing here, but it wasn't connecting. And so he was like, if this is really true, then what about this? And I remember thinking, um, wow, he, he was listening to the language. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was really important. But I think, you know, like, like Joe or even, you know, even Flo who's here, you know, um, they're both mindful enough to say, if I'm, if I'm not um, being congruent with my behavior or my, my attitude, um, they're both willing to say, well, what's that all about? They're calling you out of your BS. Yeah, they're willing to say. <laughs> I literally, I have people about? across every area of my life constantly doing this to me. Yeah. Like, right. it's great because you're like, oh, shoot. Right. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Or, yes, I know I suck in this area. Like, I've got to improve. Like, literally all the time. Like, you do it. I mean, right. Joe will call me out or, or bring right. up something or, 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 or whoever in my life, especially at work. Like, I've got Scott DeLong in my life constantly telling right. me everything I'm doing wrong. And I mean, literally all these different coaches and, and people that I surround myself with because I do not want to live in that pit anymore. Yeah. I do not want to screw my life up anymore. I don't want to live with a bunch of regrets of pain and things I've screwed up. I've, I've literally screwed up so much and I'm tired of screwing up. And that's kind of one of the reasons I, I'm learning all this because I want to get out of my own funk. I don't want to deal with body issues. Right. I don't want to deal with my mental state being fried or anything. I don't want to deal with relationships not working or my business not working. So yeah. constantly getting around these people, I constantly, I mean, you did it three days ago or four days ago, nailed me on something. So we just got done watching Bob and talking about calling each other out on BS. So we're using our language clearly. We're, we're experiencing accountability from other people in our lives. So we've gone through this thing of discovering purpose and principles poured into us so that we can take action on a daily basis to live out this life. Now we're, as we're taking these actions, we need accountability from other people to mirror back to us. What are we actually doing? What are the results we're getting? As we move from Bob to Tooker, I want you to see the differences and catch this. Bob's talking about forms of accountability and Tucker's really gonna bring this home for, and Tucker's really gonna bring this home for us. And you do a great job of serving and leading your team. Thanks, and that's man. not about pouring water. Yeah. That's about sowing into their lives, leading them through campaigns of change right. because they all wanna get better. They right. wanna be part of the outcome, but they don't necessarily wanna be part of the process right. because it's scary. And if they hear you say collision and they're afraid of conflict, I gotta there, go to the restroom, yeah, yeah. I'm out of here. I'm out of here, yes, they've done that thing. <laughs> so that was, was the best explaining, because this is my new area of growth. Yeah. Like learning to collide well in love and address conflict. It's an area that I really struggled with and still massively struggle with today. I because just, you have a heart it's just so, and you don't want to so hurt people. Me. Yeah. You don't want to hurt so people. So challenging for and me. And so you're hurting people by not being Correct, honest. Correct, 100%. And what changes you is when you have kids. Yeah. Kids are so honest. And they'll tell you, and they'll right. call you out on your stuff. Yeah. But then as they grow older, they need you to steward them and guide them. And you have to say, hey, yeah. I know you're doing a great job and I love you, but a correction is not rejection. And so you start to learn the distinction on, on how you can impact people's lives by being honoring of the truth, being kind in your delivery, but standing committed to your view. And it doesn't mean it's the right view. It's just my view, Troy, from the outside. And you're applying this to companies and kids and every area of your life, this servant leader concept where you're speaking in love and colliding in love. And like, I mean, you're doing it, Chris. Like, well, thank you. And, and it's, not a, it's, not a, um, it's not a perfectionist thing. It's a yeah. journey. And so when you don't do it right, you come back and you do what? What's the first thing you say when you make a mistake? I'm sorry, I screwed I'm sorry, it up, guys. But I have to tell yeah. you, most people don't have the humility yeah. or the confidence that it's okay to say I'm sorry because they don't want to be blamed. I have to say I'm sorry a lot, Chris. You say life. it, and then you would I mean, like go across the place. You would apologize, I and I say, "Don't say you're basis. sorry. I'm you're the customer." Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah, been a it's been a journey sorry. for me, and so I apologize when I don't get it right. I apologize to my kids and to my family and yeah. to my friends and my clients. And you know what happens after I apologize? You know what they extend? Grace. Grace, it's okay. But There's why am I like, afraid to apologize when that's right there? I don't know, and, and most people do that. Like, I mean, honestly, if you say you're sorry, like people just, the whole energy shifts. And if you don't acknowledge you your mistake, yeah. then you're not gonna be able to identify it for change. So out of curiosity, like sure. uh, real quick, what book, if you're like a parent or if you're mm. like running a company or an organization, 
on these two subjects, I mean, these subjects of like uh, climbing in love and like servant leadership, I guess, like what books come to mind that people should read out of curious wow. apply or courses to take or things to watch? I'm I'll, just curious. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the dynamic that I want to answer that question Go with. for it. I've read probably 200 books. Yeah. And everything from the Bible to the Purpose Driven Life, which uh -huh. are great, you know, sources of wisdom. Yeah. Uh, to Tony Robbins and John Maxwell and uh, so many others, yeah. uh, Good to Great, um, you know, uh, Think and Grow Rich yeah. by Napoleon Hill, all of the Dale Carnegie books. Uh -huh. And what I've learned is that when we go through a class, we only retain about 10 or 15%. Mm -hmm. If we take copious notes, we can double yeah. what we actually retain. So now we're up to 20 or 30%. So rereading books and getting things explained to us. And that's what I love about the podcast that you're doing. Mm -hmm. I've been watching them for weeks now. And I'll tell you, I heard something again for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And it anchored in me. That's awesome. And so I think the purpose of what you're doing here is we're looking to share my scar tissue. Correct. To help others grow. Like specific experiences like what does that really look like? What's, so what are the truth beyond the truth? And that's, I think, like, like again, how did you discover your purpose? What is exactly your teaching? How do you apply it to your company for real? Like, how do we really go deep? The, the to biggest, share the, the biggest strategy I used was the CEO groups. Yeah. I was in this uh, Vistage CEO group for almost ten years, and then I was in the Convene Christian CEO group yeah. for ten years. It was like doing a double MBA program. Yeah. And every month you had iron sharpening iron. You'd have people that were committed to being truthful, and they weren't always kind. Your financials suck. You don't have control of your business. You don't have a plan. Yeah. Wow, I don't want to go next month. <laughs> but it made me better. Yes. And so to have honest people in our lives, to give them permission, I think is probably the catalyst to making changes in your life. You and I talked about that the other so night. So let's stop here. So catch this. Don't miss this point, everybody. Like, watch this. So first, uh, Vistage and Convene are entrepreneur groups that have a monthly meeting where you spend like four to six hours diving deep in it into the, the members and they're getting feedback you're getting a lot of feedback direct on, feedback direct feedback and saying dude your plan sucks like i i did this with eo entrepreneur right, organization right. so and and i feel like there's there's men's groups out there there's women's groups there's there's different organizations that offer this type of thing where there's like coaching groups even right. for you to get true impact right so you you really get spotlights shined in you from all directions, from all these people that are there to care about each other and help each other grow. They're committed to I, your growth, not your comfort. Yeah, they're committed to your growth. And I challenge you today, if you're out there listening, you find a group. If you're an entrepreneur, find an entrepreneur group. If you're a mother, find a, a women's group. Or if you're a dad, join one of the men's group. Join, there's Wake Up Warrior, there's Sterling, there's like all these crazy right. men's groups and churches they have. Like there's all kinds of groups that will challenge you and ask you the hard questions. Say, hey man, what I'm seeing in my experience with you, here is what I'm hearing you say. And they're, and they're mimicking back. You're like, holy crap. That's not I'm, what I said. I'm, and I'm they, they that, say, but they'll play it back. Yeah, they'll play it right back to you. And, and also, like, I just had this yesterday, like, my men's group, and they were just hitting me question after question, and saying, giving me their feedback and their experience. It's like, oh. See, here's the and thing. The word that, that is missing from our conversation is accountability. And we're all better when we're held accountable. Yes. And we all want to be better. But when he holds me accountable and says, dude, you need to get back in shape. You're an athlete. You're not looking like the athlete that you used to be. Ouch. I'm not very happy with him and I'm not very comfortable with him. Mm -hmm. But he's speaking a truth because he cares about it. And so that environment, they talk about iron sharpens iron. So as one man sharpens another, they don't talk about the sparks. And when you're committed and you're in this group, you can create your own mastermind group. You can pick a hand, handful of friends and say, hey, I just want to be in community with you. Hope you enjoyed this episode with, with Chris Tooker, the man, the myth, the legend. Hopefully you understand how purpose and passion and principles and accountability measured in with this, mixed in with all of this, helps us move forward to our destiny, toward our, our passion, toward our purpose we're going to live out in this lifetime. And as you watch these shows, I hope you're getting out of this and in little insights and revelations that can help you move your life forward. See, we're creating this culture here even at this company and in my life, around my life, of people that are helping me fulfill out my purpose, 
my passion and I hope that these videos are helping impact your life. So have a happy new year. Go set some 2019 goals and I hope you guys crush them this year coming up. So thank you.